Good morning. Uh, I'm glad to have a chance to talk to, uh, with you uh, here. And uh, my talk is the uh, artificial vision by deep C uh, CNN neocognitive. The topic of the talk is uh, what is a neocognitive? Uh, it's a kind of deep uh, CNN convolutional neural network. But uh, there are several differences between the uh, neocognitive and the uh, conventional deep uh, CNN. So uh, the next, next talk is the, the what are differences from conventional deep uh, CNN. And uh, last, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, the neural network models extended from the neocognitive. Neocognitive was originally uh, suggested by the uh, biological neural networks, in the, especially in the uh, visual cortex of mammalian uh, visual cortex. And uh, in the model, uh, we have two types of cells, uh, which we call S cell and C cell. S cell is named after simple cells in the visual cortex, and C cell is named after uh, complex cells. The, uh, it had the architecture like this. Uh, it's uh, deep convolutional networks. And the uh, S-cell uh, makes the uh, feature extraction here, and then uh, followed by the layer of C-cells. C-cells make a pooling uh, operation. And uh, this uh, unit or the stage uh, co consisting of s cell and c cell are uh, connected in a cascade like this. And the, uh, at the uh, deepest layer, we have the, well, uh, the deepest layer, uh, the recognition result is shown. And the, uh, each layer is divided into uh, sub-layers. Uh, in each sub-layer, cells are located, uh, keeping the uh, retinotopy to the uh, ape layer. And the uh, connection uh, from the, uh, between the two, uh, Sublayers uh, is like this. Uh, it uh, it has shared uh, connection and it makes the spatial filtering and make that the uh, convolution network, convolution layers. And the uh, I I like to start about the uh, principle of the robust recognition by the neocognition. In the neocognition, the cells in the lower stage. Uh, have a small receptive field and observe the uh, small area of the empty image. And uh, uh, local features are extracted in the, in the initial stage. And then uh, these uh, extracted features are combined uh, in the next stage. And the cell in the next stage uh, have a receptive field, larger receptive field, and observe uh, more uh, complex features. And the, uh, in the higher stage, the cells observe the uh, preceding uh, response of the preceding stage, and the uh, each cell respond to uh, one particular fit uh, pattern uh, presented during the learning stage. And now uh, I'd like to uh, discuss about the uh, connection between S cells and C cells. Uh, each S cell has a small receptive field and uh, receive the uh, small uh, information from a small area of the empty air uh, imp uh, pattern. And then, uh, for example, uh, this, this cell has uh, already learned the uh, lambda-shaped uh, feature located here. And the, uh, each cell uh, have receptive field uh, slightly different uh, locations. And the cell in the C cell receive our input connection from a group of S cells located in a small uh, area. And if one, uh, one of these uh, cells is active, then uh, this cell come to be active. So uh, if the uh, input pattern uh, A is presented here, this cell is active and this cell is active. If the input pattern is shift like this, then uh, another S cell will respond to this feature. But still, this cell keeps responding. Uh, even if it's uh, shaped like this, uh, still this cell uh, keeps responding. Now, uh, we, we direct to observe the response of the next stage. Uh, this cell or uh, this S cell uh, received the input signal from this group of cells. If uh, these three uh, features 
are active, uh, cells extracting these uh, three features are active, then this cell will become active. So uh, let us uh, consider this cell. So uh, it received our uh, connection from uh, three uh, local features. But because uh, we have S uh, C cells behind S cell layer, so uh, we have some tolerance area uh, made by the uh, input connection to the C cells. So uh, let these, uh, this pattern uh, be the uh, pattern at, uh, given during the learning stage. And this cell have learned this combination of local features. After the uh, learning, uh, if uh, another cell uh, like this is uh, presented into the input layer, uh, these cells uh, become uh, shifted uh, in the input layer, uh, and uh, another cell will respond in this uh, S cell layer. However, uh, there are these, this feature is within the tolerance area of the C cells, uh, followed by the S cell, and this is also in the uh, tolerance area of the C cell, and this is also the same. So uh, even if the input pattern is deformed like this, uh, still this cell uh, keep responding. If even if the input pattern is deformed like this, uh, still this cell is active. So uh, we can say that there are all these deformed patterns which have not been shown during the learning stage uh, can activate this S cell. So uh, let us consider the connection to C cell. C cell receive our uh, input connection from a group of S cells, uh, which are located in a small area. And uh, we can say that is the operation of uh, tolerating positional error. However, uh, this, the same uh, network can be observed uh, from a different uh, point of view. Uh, for example, uh, if uh, we look at this way, this is the uh, observation of the response of C cell, but if uh, this S cell, uh, C cell is uh, active, then its activity is uh, transmitted to a group of C cells. So uh, this identical uh, operation can be considered in another way. Uh, it makes a kind of blurring, or res blurring operation. So uh, in the neocognitron, uh, the similarity between two patterns are well judged by the uh, inner product of the two patterns, uh, namely uh, by the overlap between the two. So uh, even if uh, these two patterns are very similar to our visual system, to our eye, however, uh, they are judged as uh, orthogonal because there are no overlap between them. However, if the input pattern is blurred like this, then uh, there are a large overlap, uh, so uh, we can judge their similar patterns. So uh, the role of the system layer uh, can be interpreted the, in these ways. Uh, it's the function of tolerating shift by blurring, and uh, it increases the robustness of the deformation. And, uh, but uh, different from the conventional uh, deep neural network, uh, pulling uh, in the neocognitive is made by averaging, not by uh, max pulling. And uh, in the CC layer, we make uh, some downsampling to, to reduce the computational cost. The, uh, so uh, in the CC layer, we make a blurring operation, uh, which make uh, we make a special blur uh, before dump sampling to prevent the aliasing noise. Uh, so or we can say that the low pass filter uh, in the features sp uh, in the horizontal space uh, before coarse sampling. And uh, also, uh, this is a kind of smooth additive random noise by averaging. So uh, now uh, we need like to consider about the C cells. Uh, it's named after simple cell in the visual cortex. The, uh, this is the architecture of the uh, connection uh, to uh, converging to a single S cell. Uh, and this is the uh, neurons that are used in the conventional uh, neural networks. Uh, it has uh, inner product between the input uh, pattern. Uh, it's a 
represented by vector uh, and the inner product of the two vectors, and then uh, there are some uh, nonlinear functions. In the neocognitive, we have another cell here uh, which calculates the uh, upper, uh, root, root mean square of the empty image. In other words, the norm of the empty image is calculated by this cell. And this cell sends an uh, inhibited signal to this S cell. So, uh, and the, uh, the connection to, uh, excited connection to S cell is given by this uh, uh, value. Uh, this is a training vector. It's the normalized by the no, uh, norm of the X, and then uh, this is the uh, co connection A. So uh, the uh, response of the S cell uh, is given by this equation uh, in a product uh, of A and X and minus uh, inhibitor signal from uh, here. And uh, the strength of the inhibitor signal is uh, minus theta, and uh, it makes the uh, inhibitor uh, action to this uh, S cell. And the, uh, the nonlinearity of the S cell is uh, rectified linear. So uh, if, it's, uh, if this value is negative, uh, the output is zero. <coughs> so uh, mathematically, we can say that uh, this is the architecture of the network. And if we define the similarity between the uh, reference vector uh, and the uh, test vector. Uh, so uh, we, we S is defined by the normalized inner product of uh, large X uh, and the uh, test vector X, small x. And uh, if we define similarity by this e uh, equation, then uh, the output of the response of, uh, response of the cell is given by this equation. So uh, if we uh, draw a diagram in the multi-dimensional uh, feature space, uh, let this be the reference vector or the training vector. And then uh, this is the input vector, uh, small x. And then uh, if it's similarity defined by uh, this uh, value, s uh, is uh, smaller than the some, some certain uh, value uh, theta, then uh, this cell is uh, active. And if it's, uh, uh, S is smaller than theta, then uh, this becomes uh, silent. So uh, in the neocognition, uh, we have two types of uh, uh, inhibition. A in the original neocognition, we use the divisional inhibition. Uh, in that case, the output of the cell is given uh, by this equation, where uh, phi is a uh, rectified linear function and uh, S is the similarity between the training vector and the test vector. And uh, in the original uh, neocognition, we use this one. Uh, but uh, in the recent neocognition, uh, we use this type of uh, cell. Uh, so uh, this uh, inhibition uh, works in a subtractive manner. And in the old one, uh, the, the, uh, it works in the divisional one. Well, I first thought uh, this is better because the feature uh, is extracted independent of the intensity of the input pattern. However, it was not the case. Uh, let us consider these patterns, uh, some patterns with background noise. Well, there are faint background noise in each uh, stimulus pattern. In that case, uh, the cell uh, in the uh, intermediate layer become like this. Uh, the cell or extract the features from this area, small area is uh, not so different between the subtractive and divisional inhibition because the uh, background noise is very uh, weak. However, uh, let us consider this area. Uh, if you use the subtractive inhibition, uh, the uh, intensity of the uh, stimulus pattern, is uh, stimulus feature is very weak, so uh, we, ha we can have almost zero uh, output. However, uh, if you use the divisional inhibition, uh, it extracts the feature independent of the uh, intensity of the empty image. So uh, we have a response, uh, the same response when uh, this pattern is given. 
So we can say that uh, in the old neo uh, the uh, it observe uh, extract features uh, from this type of feature. So uh, the output from this layer is almost the same, uh, even if this pattern is given or uh, even this pattern is given. Uh, the intermediate cell uh, cells are. Uh, produce a similar response uh, if you use the uh, division inhibition. So uh, this area, this pattern, uh, this component of the stimulus pattern uh, will degrade the uh, rec correct recognition. Uh, this is an example of the simulation. This is the intensity of the uh, noise, uh, noise by uh, signal uh, ratio. And uh, if you use the uh, subtractive, and the, this is the recognition rate by the neocognition. If you use subtractive inhibition, uh, if the background noise increases uh, gradually, uh, the recognition uh, error increases. However, if you use the subtractive, uh, divisionary inhibition, uh, the recognition error uh, increases rapidly, even if a small amount of noise is given. So. Uh, we can compare these uh, two patterns that uh, subdirective inhibition is very uh, robust to the uh, noise. Then uh, we uh, considered how to uh, train the uh, S cell in the intermediate layers. We use the uh, rule uh, which we call adip silent rule. The, uh, this uh, uh, rule uh, is you applied to the uh, S cells in, in intermediate layers. Let me uh, the connection from uh, C cells in the preceding stage, and uh, this is, is uh, S cells. And uh, in the uh, rule uh, which, which I propose, uh, which is called uh, AIS Adex Talent <coughs> Rule. Then, uh, if uh, post all postsynaptic cells are silent, then uh, we uh, generate one uh, ce new cell here. And the new cell has come to have the connection from the preceding ce cells uh, in proportion to the intensity of the training pattern. So, uh, in the uh, and if silent true, uh, once a cell are, is uh, generated, no more modification of the input connection. So uh, in most of the neural networks, uh, there are several uh, types of uh, uh, tuning uh, proposed. We know uh, Hebian, uh, we know take all, we know take ruler, uh, back propagation, uh, or deep learning. However, uh, in the uh, neocognitive, we use the other side to rule. Uh, if once the cell is generated, uh, no more modification. So the uh, calculation uh, is very uh, fast. Uh, we don't need any uh, repetitive uh, presentation. So uh, this is the rule of Adif Talent. And uh, let us consider the case how the cells are generated in their work. Uh, in the uh, initial stage, uh, no cells are exist in the S cell layer. And uh, if this pattern is presented, this is the uh, response of the C cells or the preceding stage. And uh, because there is no cell, so uh, we can say that they are silent. So a new cell is generated here, and the input connection to this uh, generated cell is proportional to the intensity of the training pattern. So uh, it, it comes to have this uh, connection. And in the next stage at t equal one, uh, another cell, uh, e another training pattern is presented. And uh, if this cell is silent, then a uh, new cell is generated here. And uh, it has the connection uh, proportional to the intensity of the training uh, vector. And in the next stage, uh, if this training pattern uh, is given, and uh, to this training pattern, uh, one of the cell or uh, existing cell is active. So uh, we don't make any uh, tuning or uh, generation, or no generate the cell. Uh, this is just ignored. 
And uh, after that, if uh, another training pattern is given here, and uh, these uh, two existing cells are silent, then uh, we generate a new cell. So uh, in the uh, multidimensional feature space, uh, there are uh, two cells that exist uh, there, uh, and uh, this is the area of the uh, tolerating, uh, tolerating area, tolerance area of the cell. And uh, this is uh, given by this uh, circle. And uh, if a new uh, training vector is pre presented, because uh, these uh, two cells, the existing cells, are silent. So, uh, uh, if a new cell is generated at this location, so a uh, training vector is uh, adopted as uh, the new uh, reference vector of the generated cell. And uh, in the next stage, uh, we present uh, another training vector like this. Uh, this uh, vector. Uh, well, uh, at least the response from this cell, existing cell. So uh, this is just ignored and nothing happened. So uh, we can say that the uh, minimum distance between the cell become the, uh, well, cosine theta, or where uh, theta is the uh, one uh, represented. Yeah, this, this area. So uh, the minimum distance uh, of the, the generated cell uh, become uh, cosine, arc cosine theta, and the uh, maximum distance between cells become uh, twice the, well, become the uh, diameter of the uh, tolerance area if the uh, uh, sufficiently uh, large number of cells, uh, uh, training vectors, have been presented. And uh, here we propose to use the uh, du dual threshold for the S cells. If the, uh, in the learning stage we have uh, high uh, threshold of the uh, cells, so uh, if the uh, this is the existing cell, and it has the tolerance area, small tolerance area because of the high uh, threshold. And uh, if another cell, a training vector is presented here, uh, because this cell is uh, silent, so uh, this, uh, this training vector is adopted as the new uh, reference vector. However, if the uh, threshold is low, then uh, each cell has a large uh, tolerance area. So, uh, even if training vector is presented here, this cell is active, uh, response. response. So uh, we can generate a uh, new cell around here at this location. However, uh, so uh, during the training stage, uh, it's recommended to use high threshold. However, uh, in the uh, well uh, recognition phase, the uh, this is the uh, stimulus vector, and this is the cell uh, already exists. And uh, if the uh, training vector, uh, stimulus vector is presented here in the recognition phase, then uh, this cell is active. Uh, in the uh, low threshold uh, case, uh, the uh, tolerance area is very large. So uh, stimulus, uh, vector, uh, stimulus vector uh, can uh, elicit response from uh, a large number of uh, cells in the low, low threshold case. So uh, if the uh, input, uh, stimulus vector is uh, shifted a little bit, then uh, if you use the uh, high threshold, then uh, another cell comes to respond. So. Uh, if the cell in the next stage observed this situation, uh, they uh, thought that they observed that they are quite different uh, stimulus. However, if you use the low threshold like this, uh, even if the uh, stimulus shift a little bit, 
the ref uh, response of the cell does not differ so much. So uh, here uh, we uh, consider about the uh, hypothesis uh, made by a uh, neurophysiologist uh, when we uh, you, uh, observe, uh, recognize my grandmother, uh, how uh, the brain, uh, cells in the brain uh, works. Uh, in the grandmother cell theory, uh, there is a grandmother which responds selectively to, uh, to my grandmother. So if this is cell is active, then uh, we can recognize this is my grandmother. The uh, other uh, hypothesis uh, is the population coding. The spatial temporal pattern of the uh, activity of the uh, cell in the brain uh, corresponds to the, uh, the uh, response of the uh, grandmother. So uh, there is an argument between neurophysio among uh, neurophysiologists, uh, which is the case. However, uh, in the, uh, if we use dual threshold for S cells, then uh, we use, uh, during the learning, we use the high threshold, and we uh, make a situation like a grandmother cell. So uh, it uh, guarantees to generate a uniform distribution of the cells in the feature space. In the recognition phase, uh, we use the low threshold, uh, and uh, in other words, it's a blur in the feature space. And uh, we make a population coding, and uh, we can uh, get a robust recognition of deformed patterns. Then uh, why good recognition rate uh, can be ob obtained by a simple added silent rule? The, uh, the final classification of input pattern is made by the deep layer and not by the intermediate layer. So the role of the intermediate layer is to represent an uh, input pattern uh, accurately by the population coding and not by the response of a single cell. So uh, it's enough if a stimulus can be represented accurately by the response of the whole cells in the layer. And uh, best fitting of individual cell to a stimulus is not necessarily uh, important. So uh, we can say that uh, C cell uh, makes uh, a blurring or a pooling in the retinotopic space, uh, while the S cell uh, with the low threshold uh, make a blur uh, in the feature space. So uh, both of them make a blurring operation and uh, or the pooling operation uh, to uh, increase the uh, to have a high uh, well accuracy in the recognition. Now let us consider uh, the uh, training of the recognition in the uh, highest stage, deepest layer. Uh, this is the uh, network of the neocognition, and uh, this is the input layer, and these uh, layers are trained by the other silent rule. So uh, now uh, we consider the response of this, uh, uh, the deepest layer. And the, in the deep layer, uh, the uh, input patterns, which are represented by feature vectors, is classified by uh, at this stage. Uh, so uh, we consider uh, only this, uh, only this place, uh, only this stage, and uh, input pattern are uh, already are uh, represented by feature vectors, and uh, depend uh, using the uh, response of the feature vectors. Uh, uh, we uh, classify input pattern. So uh, in the multidimensional feature space, uh, training vectors, oh sorry, training vectors are, are represented by a small number of reference vectors. And uh, these, uh, each uh, training vector, uh, uh, sorry, uh, each Reference vectors have a label representing the uh, class of the training vector. So in this case, the uh, supervised learning is used. So uh, let these be the uh, square, be the reference vector of class A, and these are res uh, reference vector of uh, other class, uh, class B. 
And the, this is the, the uh, decision border. And uh, in the all near conjunction, uh, we use the uh, winner take all uh, rule. Uh, if a test vector is presented, we search the nearest uh, reference vector. Uh, in this case, uh, this is the nearest vector. So uh, this pattern is recognized as uh, A because the label of this reference vector is A. However, uh, we are now uh, propose to use uh, uh, another pattern, which we uh, call uh, interpreting vector. Interpreting vector is the uh, vectors uh, made by the linear combination of the uh, reference vector of the same label. So uh, there are uh, infinite number of uh, uh, reference vectors uh, along this line. It's given by this uh, equation. And uh, in the recognition phase, if you use the uh, winner take or conventional winner take all rule, uh, this is the test vector, and we search the nearest reference vector. And this is the nearest vec reference vector, so uh, this is classified as class B. However, uh, in the uh, <coughs> If you use the interpreting vector, uh, we have a situation like this. Interpreting vector are uh, well, uh, distributed along the line connecting uh, reference vectors of the same label. So uh, this uh, interpreting vector is the nearest to this test vector. So uh, this test vector is recognized as uh, class A because uh, this is the interpreting vector made by the uh, reference vector of uh, class A. So uh, this process uh, can be interpreted that uh, we uh, search the nearest line uh, to this test vector. So uh, lines, are, uh, lines are made by the connecting uh, reference vector of the same label. So uh, in this case, uh, this is the nearest line so uh, this pattern is uh, recognized as uh, A. So uh, this is the, uh, how we can uh, calculate the similarity. Uh, and uh, we <coughs> write it the similarity of line. Uh, this is the value. And uh, I'll skip these uh, details of the calculation. But uh, I'd like to show that this is possible. So uh, in the uh, feature space, we have a situation like this. Uh, all reference vectors are distributed in a multi-dimensional feature space. And the test pattern is given here. So uh, if you use the, uh, well, we not take all, uh, the nearest uh, reference vector is uh, here. So uh, it recognizes a nine. But if you use the uh, uh, interpreting vector, uh, this is uh, this uh, interpreting vector situated here is nearest to this uh, test pattern, so uh, it's recognized as seven. So uh, this is an example of some example of the patterns which are recognized erroneously by the winner take all, but correctly by the interpreting vector. If this pattern is presented here. Uh, if you use the winner take all, then uh, it's recognized as uh, pattern eight. However, if you use the interpreting vector, uh, this pattern is the uh, pattern uh, between these two patterns. So uh, it's recognized correctly as two. And uh, this is another example. Uh, this pattern <coughs> is recognized erroneously by uh, this. Oh, so, sorry, this pattern is recognized erroneously as zero uh, by the uh, winner take all, but uh, uh, correctly by the interpreted vector. These are all examples, the similar example. This is recognized as eight by the winner take all, but uh, by the use of uh, interpreted vector, it's recognized as three. So uh, what is the process of uh, the uh, interpreted vector? Uh, if these patterns are presented or are made by the reference vectors, 
then the deformed pattern, uh, sequence of deformed pattern become like this. Uh, if we use the uh, interpreted vector, uh, this pattern is uh, emulated uh, by the uh, linear interpolation. So uh, and this, is, uh, this pattern is uh, nearest to this uh, pattern. If the, uh, this process is made <coughs> directly to the input pattern, uh, we have some difficulty. However, this operation is applied not directly to the input image, but to the extracted features. So uh, this, uh, this pattern can be uh, well emulated if we use the uh, interpreting uh, vector uh, in the uh, after uh, extracted uh, features. Now, uh, in this case, uh, we use the interpreting vector from two uh, vectors. But usually, I use uh, interpreting vector from three uh, reference vectors, uh, which we, I write uh, in three. And uh, this one is uh, represented by in two. B uh, in this case, the uh, number of uh, well, planes uh, become uh, very large, so the computational cost is a little bit uh, increased. However, the recognition rate is much become much better by the use of uh, in three. So uh, we I usually use the uh, in three uh, interpreted vector from three reference vectors uh, in the uh, well experiment. Now, uh, how to uh, make the uh, well. Uh, reference vector of the higher stage. We propose to use, uh, uh, oh sorry, margin uh, winner take all. Yeah. That these uh, are the reference vector uh, of uh, class B, and these are reference vector of class A. And uh, this is a training vector uh, given here. If the it's uh, presented here, uh, if you use the uh, winner take all process, then uh, it is recognized as uh, correct, uh, as uh, A, uh, it's uh, correct. So uh, in the case, uh, if the recognition error is nothing, uh, if the uh, result of recognition is correct by the winner take all, then uh, we do not make anything. Uh, X is just ignored. Turning vector is just ignored. But uh, in the uh, mar margin that we are take all, we uh, give some uh, handicap to the uh, cells. Uh, oh, sorry. Handicap to the cell of uh, other class than the uh, training vector. So uh, in this case, the uh, Margin of the uh, is given uh, here uh, to uh, separate the uh, test vector into the uh, class A or class B. So we give handicap to the cell in the class B, and uh, because of the margin, uh, this uh, training vector is uh, recognized as error. So uh, we new, uh, make a new reference vector. Uh, X is adopted as a new reference vector of class A. So uh, by this process, uh, most of the newly generated uh, reference vector distribute uh, more densely than the, uh, in the uh, near the border between two classes than in the center of the crust, each cluster. So uh, we can have some uh, non-uniform uh, distribution of uh, uh, reference vector in the feature space. And uh, in the case of the uh, deep layer, uh, the tuning is uh, important, uh, different from the intermediate stage. So uh, we use the two-step learning. Uh, if we present a training vector here, then uh, we calculate uh, this value. Uh, I uh, skip the detail of the mathematics, but uh, if uh, this is uh, uh, smaller than uh, theta uh, r, then uh, new reference vector is generated. Maybe uh, if the uh, 
we, we have uh, error by the margin winner take all. A uh, new reference vector uh, is generated here, and uh, X is adopted as a uh, reference vector of the uh, new reference vector. And uh, if uh, this is uh, uh, correct uh, by the uh, margin winner take all, uh, this uh, training vector is just ignored. And uh, in the second stage, uh, well, uh, we uh, tune up the connection using the uh, learning vector x. And, the, uh, and it's important to uh, start the uh, tuning uh, after sufficient, uh, sufficiently number of, uh, sufficient number of uh, vectors have been generated. So uh, the, uh, this is the uh, diagram in the multi-dependent feature space. And these are the uh, reference vector which uh, constitute the nearest, uh, uh, nearest plane uh, to this uh, trend vector. And uh, let this be uh, presented by this equation, by linear combination of these three uh, reference vectors. Then the uh, amount of uh, tuning up is proportional to this uh, P, uh, P, uh, PK. And the uh, all uh, three reference vectors, uh, which, is, uh, have the, which makes the nearest plane uh, to this training vector, is shifted toward the uh, training vector X. Then uh, we made the uh, computer simulation. And uh, for the intermediate stages, we used other silent rule. And uh, the highest stage of the, the deepest layer, uh, we use uh, two-step learning. Well, uh, in the first step, a uh, new vector uh, is uh, produced by the margin winner take all. And uh, in the second step, uh, tune-up is made by the interpreting vector. And uh, in the recognition phase, uh, we use the uh, uh, interpretive vector for the highest stage. And uh, this is the example of the error rate. Uh, and this is the amount of margin uh, given to the, uh, during the uh, training phase. And uh, this is the uh, number of reference vectors that are generated. If the margin is small, uh, number of re uh, generated reference vector is small. Uh, however, if the margin is large, uh, the larger uh, become the uh, reference vectors, uh, number of reference vectors. And uh, this is the er recognition error. And uh, this is the one uh, for the winner take all. And uh, this is uh, interpreting vector uh, using uh, from two uh, reference vectors. And this is the interpreted vector from uh, three uh, reference vector, and this is from four reference vector. Uh, even though the uh, well, recognition error becomes small, smaller than use the three reference vector, but the computational cost become very large. So we usually use uh, this uh, bold uh, black line uh, interpreted vector uh, by three uh, vectors. And uh, the recognition error uh, usually uh, gradually uh, decreases with the increase in the number of reference vectors. Uh, to compare this with the uh, well, uh, support vector machine, uh, we uh, also made the uh, recognition by support vector machine. The, this is the recognition error by the support vector machine. And uh, we uh, just compare them uh, and uh, if you use the uh, support vector machine, uh, we have a recognition error around here, three point uh, something. And the, uh, the number of uh, reference vectors are used for the support vectors, the number of support vectors is around <coughs> here. And uh, if you use the uh, interpret vector from three, then uh, we can have much uh, smaller error rate with a much smaller uh, number of reference vectors. And uh, if we use the same number of uh, uh, reference vectors, uh, the SVM, uh, then uh, the error rate can be much smaller. 
And all, we can also say that the, uh, this is the uh, error rate of the uh, nearest neighbor to the sample uh, because this is the winner take all and uh, all uh, if the margin is the large, uh, all uh, training vectors are adopted as the reference vector. So uh, we can understand that this is the uh, error rate by the one nearest neighbor to the sample. Uh, and uh, we can see that some kind of uh, uh, well, overtraining is uh, observed around here. And we can have the uh, best recognition rate or the smallest uh, recognition error uh, is obtained around here. It's interesting to s s observe that uh, this number of training vector is uh, the almost the same as the uh, number of training vectors which are selected by SVM. Well, now, uh, I'd like to show some example of the neural network modes extended from the neocode neutron. Uh, well, first, uh, I'd like to show the uh, recognition of partially occluded patterns. Look at these patterns. You might feel uh, difficulty in recognizing what they are. However, you can easily see uh, what they are. If the uh, input pattern is uh, occluded by some uh, gray object, and the occluding object is not seen, it's, we have difficulty in recognizing them. However, if the occluding object is visible, we can easily uh, understand what they are. So uh, in the VGM system, or also in the neural network models, uh, the input pattern is uh, uh, first uh, features are extracted from input pattern, and uh, relevant features are transmitted to, to the higher stage, and we can recognize them. If the input pattern is uh, occluded by some uh, object, then uh, by the occlusion, some relevant features do not uh, reach the highest stage of the uh, brain. At the same time, uh, irrelevant features are generated because of the occlusion, and these irrelevant features uh, disturb the uh, correct recognition largely. And uh, the uh, irrelevant feature appears around the cone, uh, around the border uh, of the uh, occluding object. So uh, this uh, red uh, mark shows the area where the uh, irrelevant feature appeared by the occlusion. So uh, we propose to use uh, add a uh, mask layer, uh, which extract the uh, respond only to the occluding object. If you use this mask layer, uh, then uh, we can have uh, better recognition rate. So uh, here uh, we have mask layer, which uh, uh, detect the uh, occluding object, and uh, this. Uh, the response of this layer uh, inhibits the relevant feature that appeared near the border of the uh, occluding and the uh, target object. And uh, mm -hmm. by using the Arbasca layer, uh, irrelevant features are uh, prevented to uh, reach the highest stage. So uh, in the recognition uh, phase, uh, although irrelevant features uh, disturb the recognition rate, uh, these irrelevant features are blocked uh, by Arbasca layer. And, uh, uh, the network has some tolerance to partial absence of relevant features. So we can recognize the input pattern correctly. Uh, this is the mask area given to the neocognition. And uh, this is the example of the response of the network. If this pattern is uh, presented, uh, it was uh, recognized as I because it, has, it is not different from, uh, it's, it, this pattern has not been uh, presented during the training stage. However, uh, if you use the uh, mask layer and uh, the uh, occluding object is uh, uh, given to the uh, mask layer, then this pattern is correctly recognized as A. <coughs> this is another example. Look at this pattern. You probably uh, recognize that it's, uh, B is uh, occluded. 
Are you correct? How about this one? You might recognize that this is R. The difference between the two is only the uh, placement of the gray object. Black part of the pattern uh, does not differ between them. So uh, if pattern is presented to the neocognition with mask area, then this pattern is recognized as R, as uh, it's like the our uh, observation. And then uh, if the uh, another pattern uh, with different occluding object, then uh, it's recognized as B. Well, now uh, I'd like to about talk about the selective attention model, introducing a background uh, backward signal pattern. In the neocognition, uh, this uh, upper part of the uh, diagram uh, shows the architecture of the neocognition. In the selective attention model, we add another uh, network here. And uh, the architecture and the uh, co uh, strengths of the connection are identical to the forward path of the neocognition. However, uh, only the uh, direction of the signal flow is uh, opposite. So uh, we'd like to uh, make the signal here. We trace the same route as uh, the input pattern. However, uh, the C cell, we make a pooling, uh, is a problem. If we uh, transmit signals of uh, all possible route, uh, then uh, this is recognized erroneously. Uh, so uh, we use a gauge signal from the uh, S cell of the uh, forward path uh, to the uh, SL in the backward path. So uh, all the uh, cells of at, at that location uh, for the uh, signal, uh, for the uh, SL is active, uh, then uh, this uh, SL is uh, can transmit signals, uh, backward signal. So uh, we can, uh, the signal can retrace the same route uh, the uh, for the path. And uh, we also give some gain control signal from the C cell in the backward path to the C cell in the forward path. This uh, has the function of uh, uh, focusing attention to some of the pattern. Even if two patterns are presented, uh, if uh, one of the pattern is recognized and then this the signal or uh, backward signal is transmitted uh, from the recognized cell, then the gain control signal account the route along this line. So uh, this is the example of the response. This is a very old uh, result. But uh, if uh, these two patterns are presented, uh, this uh, selective attention model uh, recognizes the other two and try to uh, well uh, regenerate it uh, into the uh, input layer, uh, near the input layer. Uh, we, we call the uh, adaptive uh, recall is here. However, uh, because the three is uh, located very close to pattern two, uh, this uh, feature in the uh, forward path around here is not uh, extracted correctly. So uh, in the restored pattern, uh, this part is missing. However, while the signal is rotating uh, through the uh, feedback path, then uh, when uh, time goes on, uh, attention is focused to the pattern or the co to the part of uh, pattern two, and the component of three is uh, well degraded because uh, decreased because uh, they did not receive uh, any uh, well uh, gain control signal. And uh, after uh, switching attention. Uh, the cell in the forward path has a function of fatigue. So if the backward signal is cut for a short period because of the fatigue, uh, the cell which have been, uh, have been uh, transmitting a signal of the uh, attendant sig uh, pattern uh, now have uh, lower gain because of the fatigue. So the attention is focused to other pattern and the three is recognized. This is another example. Uh, if this is uh, presented here, then uh, pattern four is uh, restored. H 
However, uh, this top part is missing because uh, the input pattern does not have such component. The training pattern has a uh, pattern like this. So uh, while the signals are circulating in the forward and backward path, then uh, it gradually, uh, this missing part is gradually restored and uh, we can uh, have this complete pattern four. After switching attention, uh, pattern two is recognized from here. And uh, after another uh, attention switching, uh, then uh, we can recognize pattern one here. So uh, we can apply this to the uh, well, uh, recognition of connected characters. Well, uh, we put <coughs> some uh, such area uh, we, where the uh, well, uh, intensity of the attention is, uh, uh, is distributed like this. And we move <coughs> this uh, area of attention. And uh, if this pattern is presented to the input area, then uh, at first the uh, this work focused attention around here. So uh, T is recognized and uh, T is restored here. And after switching attention, uh, A is recognized and uh, A is uh, attention is focused around here and A is recognized and uh, A is restored uh, in the bucket path. And after uh, another uh, attention switching, uh, this pattern T is recognized. Although this pattern, uh, uh, <coughs> the connected character can be recognized correctly. Uh, look at this pattern. Maybe uh, you all uh, recognize that uh, the cat. However, the shape of the pattern is identical. So we can say that uh, perfect recognition of a uh, character cannot be made only by the shape of the uh, input image. Even if the shape is the same, we have to uh, recognize different tree. So uh, in the selective attention model, uh, we, have, uh, we have only this part. But uh, in order to recognize connected characters, uh, we need to uh, extend it to the level of word and the semantics. And uh, we need to uh, the backward signal from the top. Uh, upper stages. So uh, it's almost the time. Uh, so uh, I'd like to close my talk uh, showing this uh, diagram. This is uh, the history of artificial neural networks. Uh, in the 1960s, we have a perceptron proposed by uh, Rodin Blatt, and we had the first boom of uh, neural network research. And uh, after the theoretical limit of perceptron is uh, well shown by Minsky and Papert, all the doom, boom uh, disappeared, and we get into the winter age. And uh, after the back propagation uh, is proposed, uh, the second boom of the uh, neural network appeared. And uh, again, uh, we enter winter age, and uh, after the presentation of the uh, well, deep learning, uh, we are now in the third boom. What's the next? Following the history of the uh, neural networks, uh, I think uh, we might come to the third winter age. In order to prevent uh, entering into the third winter age, uh, we have to learn from the brain. And uh, we, we have to find out basic principles that control the brain. Uh, basic principle uh, that control the brain is not single. I think there are many. So uh, it's important to uh, find out the basic principle that control the brain. Uh, for that, uh, we need to uh, well learn from the biological brain. Well, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? you have basically all your layers are unsupervised except the top 
that means that all the weights of all the deep, all the deep weights will not depend on the target, and that is a problem. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I have some difficulty here because of all the age. You know, I think your architectures are great, mm. but I think your learning algorithm mm. had a problem mm. because for the deep weights where you use unsupervised learning, mm. if you use unsupervised learning the way you propose, the deep weights will not depend on the targets. They will depend only on the inputs. And that can be a problem. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe uh, you're correct, but uh, the uh, well, largest merit of the uh, adversarial tool is the uh, very fast uh, learning speed. And uh, presentation of each pattern only once is enough to uh, finalize the uh, well training, and uh, and the training is uh, or, or the supervised learning is made at the uh, highest stage, deepest layer. So uh, I think there are some uh, problems uh, in the uh, some uh, features might be missing. However, uh, if we uh, increase the number of uh, cells, uh, then uh, the problem uh, would be uh, solved. Uh, and the, uh, the problem is how to determine the uh, threshold. Uh, depending on the threshold, uh, the number of cells generated is uh, controlled. So uh, in the uh, well, conventional uh, deep learning, uh, the well, Arctic, uh, during the uh, designing, uh, how much cells should be uh, should exist at each stage? That's a large problem. But the similar problem uh, occurred in the neocognition uh, trained by Adolf Salent. The how to uh, determine the threshold? If the threshold is high, we can we have a larger number of uh, cells generated. If the threshold is low, uh, that small number of cells are generated. So uh, I think there are a similar problem: uh, how to find the uh, number of cells in the deep, deep learning, or uh, how to find the thresh optimal threshold in the uh, well, adversarial tool. So uh, we also have uh, we, are, we have uh, some uh, similar problem uh, in the how to determine the number of cells here. I, I, I don't know uh, if this is the answer yet. Other questions? Uh, actually, I'm interested in the last, really the last part. So find out basic principles that control out the brain. Mm. So like, like even at Riken, so we have Brain Science Institute, oh, yeah. our AIP center. Yeah. And so far, like these two are rather separated. But mm. I completely agree with you that you know, collaboration between these two centers are quite, oh quite yeah. essential. But like in, in neuroscience, like people spend maybe more than 20 years to mm. really understand the yeah. mechanism of learning. Mm. But still, like, we can't really, really get information out of those areas. Yeah. What, what, what kind of like, input can we expect from those neuroscience areas? Well, uh, yeah. The first boom was uh, started with the uh, modeling of neural networks in the brain. But uh, the second boom and the third boom are generated not by the uh, biological uh, brain, but by the, uh, some mathematics or mm -hmm. statistics. So uh, I think we have to uh, return to the uh, initial stage. And uh, we have to uh, make some well, neural network model of the uh, well, higher uh, brain functions. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, it's become uh, difficult because all uh, single electrode, uh, recording of single electrode is not enough mm -hmm. uh, to uh, make the uh, correct uh, neural network model. So uh, I think, uh, however, uh, I think uh, <coughs> the cooperation between the uh, modeling uh, engineers and the neurophysiologists 
will, uh, I hope, uh, we solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, like, if we don't have any constraint, like mathematically, then we are free to develop whatever architectures we can think of. But mm. if we impose like a bi biological plausibility, then we have a kind of strong, strong constraint. Mm. Right? Then the kind of degree of freedom actually decreases, and yeah. developing learning algorithm is getting harder to me. So I, I'm always asking whether like learning from brain is really helpful or not. So this is a kind of long question in the community. Yeah, uh, the problem is that the uh, single electrode recording is not enough to uh, understand the architecture of the brain. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, other uh, interaction between uh, many a other areas. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, hippocampus or the uh, amygdala or the forebrain. Mm -hmm. And these interactions have to be uh, introduced into the uh, network, uh, into the model. Uh, although uh, it's a difficult problem, mm. I uh, hope someone with the uh, presented mm. good uh, neural network model which explains the whole brain. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. And okay. Uh, so, uh, the the current co uh, convolution neural network mm. they uh, they don't learn. Uh, you know, some robust representations. So mm. they suffer from some of these adversary samples. Mm. Essentially, you just perturb the input a little bit, and then you, yeah, the recognition will be wrong, right? It was, can perturb a little bit. It will say, instead of it's a dog, it will say it's a cat. Uh, so does new cognition also suffer from this problem, or it's much more robust because it's directly from sort of modeling how the human vision process it has been, it, it's working? So do you think it's, can be more robust against some of these, uh, you know, perturbations. Yeah. Well, I, I couldn't exactly catch your, uh, your question. Yeah. Uh, so basically, the convolution neural networks mm -hmm. uh, it, it suffer from some, uh, you know, perturbation. If you just perturb the input, you just mm -hmm. say perturb the pixel. Yeah. Uh, a little bit, and then you know, it's some kind of mechanism. You can perturb it. It's gonna. Uh, the recognition is going to be wrong. It's not robust. Mm -hmm. Say humans will say this is still a dog, but you know the network will say it's a cat. Mm -hmm. So the question is, does new new cognition have the same problem? Yeah. Uh, maybe we can do that uh, in the uh, deep study. Uh, we, we introduce the learning process and then. Uh, where uh, which uh, features uh, well uh, sh should be uh, used uh, to uh, well recognize the cat or the uh, dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so maybe we can continue having discussion over coffee break. So please join me to thank Professor.